ಜ್ಞಾನತಿರಾಂಧ್ಯಾಂಜನಶಲಾಕೆಯ ಚಕ್ಷುರೋನ್ಮಿಲ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀಗುರವೇ ನಮಃ ನಮೋ ವಿಷ್ಣುಪಾ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪೃಷ್ಠಾ ಭೂತಲೆ ಶ್ರೀಮತೆ ಭಕ್ತಿವೇದಾಂತಸ್ವಾಮ್ಯತಿ ನಾಮಿನೆ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಸಾರಸ್ವತೆ ದೇವೆ ಗೌರವಾಣೀ ಪ್ರಚಾರಿಣೆ ಶೂನ್ಯವಾದಿ ಪಾಶ್ಚಾತ್ಯದೇಶತಾರಿಣೆ ಜೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭೋ ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಶ್ರೀ ಅದ್ವೈತ ಗದಾಧರ್ ಶ್ರೀವಾಸಿ ಗೌರಭಕ್ತ ಬೃಂದ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೇ ಹರೇ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಬೀನ್ ಸೆಲೆಬ್ರೇಟಿಂಗ್ ಗೌರ್ ಪೂರ್ಣಿಮಾ ಬಟ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಆಬ್ವಿಯಸ್ಲಿ ವೆರಿ ವಂಡರ್ಫುಲ್ ಟು ನೋ ದಟ್ ಹೌ ದ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಗೌರ್ ಪೂರ್ಣಿಮಾ ಹ್ಯಾಪಂಡ್ first ever gaur purnima i should say first ever gaur purnima that took place on this planet whenever we go back and trace the history that how it all started that gives a lot of enthusiasm that gives a lot of inspiration oh this is how a festival should be celebrated and when we hear all this then naturally we feel very grateful to all those personalities who began who initiated this entire uh, festival the three trio the famous trio of gaudiya vaishnav sampradaya narottam das thakur shrinivas acharya and shyamanand pandit these three were very happy in vrindavan nicely doing their bhajan under the guidance of jeeva goswami so jeeva goswami was the shiksha guru of these three and these three were initiated by other great personalities in different parts and one day jeeva goswami he decided to send these three out of vrindavan for preaching now these three were having no clue that some day we will leave vrindavan sometimes our base devotees say you know that uh, i i had no clue that one day i leave the base <laughs> they had no clue they were all happy they were all having wonderful time all three of them sometime at the foot of govardhan sometime near radhakund sometimes in kamyavan sometime near bandirvan they are having nice time but then mission needs something else and all those three were sent by jeeva goswami and it was a big festival it was a big festival that was held to send these three people out of vrindavan books were loaded on the cart and all these three great personalities they were given farewell by all the great vaishnavas and everyone knew these three are not going to come back again at least one of them i <clears throat> know that he came back once to meet as guru but the other two never hmm. and those three were also knowing this is the last time we are seeing vrindavan because at that time vrindavan is not uh, taking a flight ticket and just you know flying there and is going it's all about walking and these three were supposed to walk to gauda desh and utkal desh that is bengal and orissa now there is no question of walking back just imagine you have to walk from here to there for a yatra you all will say prabhu ji ab ja ke aaiye pray for us <laughs> it's not easy na it's not easy so these three were sent and these three amazing preachers went to different different places they distributed books and book distribution also not an easy task because they have to copy the only manuscript that they have they have to make a copy of it and distribute and that's what they were doing so all three of them went to different different directions and narottam das thakur this great personality who left his hometown that is kheturi kheturi gram his father krishnanand maharaj was a maharaj great king he left his house he ran away from the house I, sh- i should use this word he ran away from the house his father sent 10 men go and get him but he convinced those 10 men also that i am on a mission i have to go and those 10 people left him can you go hari krishna and that's how narottam das thakur left his house and after many many years he returned and everyone in kheturi gram got to know that our narottam is coming back our naru is coming back and he was on the other side of padma padma river and these devotees were on this side the residents of kheturi gram some places it is given that parents were present at that time and some biographies say that they disappeared 
but then in both the cases in either of the cases a personality called santosh santosh dutt he was the king of the place so santosh dutt is the cousin brother of narottam das thakur so father's name of narottam das thakur is krishnananda maharaj and krishnananda maharaj had a brother and his name was purushottam dutt and purushottam dutt's son is santosh dutt so santosh dutt and other relatives came and the residents of kheturi gram they came and from far they could see narottam has come and everyone knew that he has taken uh, renounced order of life so everyone as soon as they saw him they started paying obeisances and then narottam came finally on this this side of the river where everyone was standing and as soon as he got down people started paying obeisances some of them were embracing and everyone they were asking now you'll not leave right and narottam said no i'll be here this will be my base of preaching now so in this way narottam das thakur was received in kheturi gram and he started being there preaching etc etc one day narottam das thakur got a letter from shri vrindavan dham now it was a very big thing to get a letter from vrindavan it's like prabhupad's time where all the communications are happening by letter and as soon as a letter comes to a temple all the devotees you know whatever 10 15 number that was there all of them they'll come and one devotee will read out loud and that used to be a big thing oh letter from swami ji letter from prabhupad has come and here also we see that when the letter came from vrindavan and was from narottam narottam was in ecstasy and when he got to know that it is by it is from his spiritual master loknath goswami he went into more ecstasy and then he opened the letter and he read the letter and the letter said that i want you to preach about deity worship establish deity worship teach people how to do deity worship for that you need to establish a temple and he also in some place it is given he also said establish five deities of krishna and one deity of gauranga and when narottam das you know he read that he was already having this desire that he should worship deities and now he got that instruction now it's bona fide and he just just started planning his plan is very nice he started planning how to install deities but before that let me tell you all a very very important aspect of the entire history see when chaitanya mahaprabhu went back to the spiritual abode at that time all the associates who were there they were not able to bear the separation in fact when raghunath das goswami heard that he decided that i'll drown myself in radha kund there were other devotees they wanted to jump from the huge mountains and commit suicide there were other devotees they wanted to drown in rivers but they all were holding their breath because that's not a proper way to leave the body and they were completely morose it it was almost like dead bodies no life no life no energy nothing all the time in the pangs of separation of shri chaitanya mahaprabhu all the time how will we baddha jeevas know what what do you mean by pangs of separation we will not understand the ones who have spent time with chaitanya mahaprabhu looking at this beautiful dance going around with lord chaitanya or preaching going around with him for yatras oh only they can comprehend what it means to get away from lord chaitanya they were all dead bodies they were not ready to travel anywhere they were just there at their place all the time feeling that separation crying in that agony feeling that intense pain of vipralambha that was the situation and in this situation there were many problems also that came into picture as soon as a great personality in the spiritual moment when he leaves naturally a lot of problems come and one of the problems that came was groupism that started it's not something that is just there now it was there it's in parampara that also is in parampara <laughs> so groupism started and many groups were not bona fide also sahajya camp started people started recruiting other people into their camp and there were a lot of misconceptions about advaita acharya nityananda prabhu especially nityan prabhu preaching style that he used to do people were having a lot of misconceptions about that 
and there was a lot of confusion in teachings of six goswamis also you can rem- imagine the entire situation such a pathetic situation it was such a pathetic situation therefore it's a very very important thing to note that somehow by mistakely we took birth in the right time when things are sorted out just imagine if you would have taken birth after chaitanya mahaprabhu leaves the body or no sorry when chaitanya mahaprabhu goes back come back to godhead the supreme personality cannot leave the body mm-hmm. chaitanya mahaprabhu he merged into the deity of chota gopinath mm-hmm. now we were not like narutta or suppose we would have taken birth also at that time we would not like we would not be like narutam das thakur crying and you know, going around and you know, thrashing onto the stone or trying to enter the fire or something like nothing he'll be even at that time searching for sense gratification mm-hmm. but ease of accessing bhakti is something that has happened now by the mercy of shila prabhupad very easy it's there everywhere devotees are there everywhere you have to just go and talk to them and the rest they will do they will they will know what to do they will do the need for you see after that span also there were many dark phases that came into picture so after this phase came the phase of jagannath das baji maharaj and that time that time also there was a dark phase where there were so many sahajiyas after that again a dark phase came when that dark phase came when shila prabhupad left at that time when iskon went to the dip Oh, that was a huge chaos. It was a huge mess that was there, and many devotees left the scorn at that time. Many devotees. Now, just imagine, we are so fortunate. But somehow, by mistakely, we have taken birth at this time, and we have come in association of devotees to practice bhakti. Oh, bhagya! Oh, bhagya! The only thing is, one has to realize the bhagya. That's very important. Anyways, coming back to the situation, it was a dark phase that was going on. and in that dark phase they they were the preachers jeev goswami was there and these three were there and there were other few senior devotees you know who were present but what to do all of them they were submerged in an ocean of agony of separation from lord chaitanya so narutam das thakur he started thinking how great it will be if all the devotees of chaitanya mahaprabhu come at one place how great this will be he also started thinking that it has been several decades that lord has disappeared from this place and we have not celebrated his appearance day and he also started you know having this uh, thought that my guru maharaj has given me the instruction to establish a temple and install deities why why not utilize this opportunity of establishing the temple installing the deities as a celebration of lord's appearance and then he decided that yes now that day will be the day of <clears throat> purnima in the month of falgun and that is gaur purnima he decided the date and he started thinking if everyone comes together whatever groups are there if everyone comes together and if they glorify the lord dance together chant the holy names naturally the entire family of chaitanya mahaprabhu will be united this is called as missionary thought process can you imagine his thought process what is he thinking about he is thinking that how can the entire thing be set right how can everyone come together again become that one family see missionaries are the ones who always think about the mission and i am not talking about those people who always think about the mission and not do any sadhana okay i am talking about the mission of the lord but when someone is intense in the mission so at that time he is also intense in his own sadhana it is only when someone has intense sadhana deep and absorbed in sadhana that person can think about the mission properly and do something for the mission and here we see narottam das thakur all the time absorbed in thinking about the lord and always engaged in devotional service always chanting the holy names and that person is thinking about the mission now just imagine how powerful this is therefore there is a very very important point to note that a missionary always thinks about the mission and to think about the mission one has to be intense in his own personal absorption in krishna consciousness those people who just think about the mission and no absorption they leave the mission very soon <laughs> then other people have to think about him as a mission to get him back therefore it's very very important 
that we understand the mission and the absorption both of them and here he started thinking the next day when he got this thought when he read that letter all that contemplation started next day he went to the king of that place and his name was santosh dat so he went to santosh dat king santosh and he told the king that this is what is my desire i want to build a huge temple and establish six deities there and i want to involve and invite all the vaishnavas all the gaudiya vaishnavas from all around india what do you say about this and santosh was in ecstasy because by this time santosh had already become the disciple of narottam das thakur can you imagine what sort of acharyas we had they would initiate their family members and here to make our family members stand one round becomes so difficult they come to preachers that why you putting tilak like this why dhoti kurta why this chanting i am already doing this that etc etc look at our acharya they they initiate their family members even prabhupa disciples they would go back to their villages initiate you know their relatives their teachers their principal etc etc how glorious these personalities are and when it comes to us you know what to do therefore any time you know when we have this uh, thought that i am a great devotee just do a video call with your family members mere maine bahut sare log ko devotees banaya nahi nahi ghar pe baat de ghar pe dekho aap pehle ghar pe anyways narottam das thakur initiated santosh the king of the place and the king was very happy and he said i will do it i'll build a build a magnificent temple and i'll do all the necessary arrangements to host thousands of gaudiya vaishnav devotees now narottam das thakur he started thinking okay so now we have got some person who want to give finance but who is going to manage i cannot manage and my friend will manage if he comes yes everything will manifest and he started thinking about shrinivas acharya so shrinivas acharya he was going around preaching and all that so narottam das thakur he wrote a letter to shrinivas acharya that this is what is my thought process i want all the gaudiya vaishnavas to come together and we should have a big festival on the day of the appearance of gauranga but there was no reply to the letter some person came from jajigram the place where shrinivas acharya would be staying and narottam das thakur was very happy maybe a reply has come for my letter but that was not the case but when he was talking to that devotee the two other devotees came and they had the reply to the letter and at that time shrinivas acharya he told that i am nearby to kheturi gram in a place called buduri you please come and meet me there shrinivas acharya he had a very illustrious disciple and his name was ramachandra kaviraj hmm. remember the word no uh, narottam das ah uh, namachandra sangamage narottam das so this ramachandra kaviraj hmm. so when he was telling that i am there in this place he also told on whose place so ramachandra kaviraj's brother govind kaviraj was staying there in buduri gram and as soon as narottam das thakur got to know that my friend shrinivas is here he was a superior also and friend also that he is here the next day he started with his disciples he started with his disciples and they went to that place now this meeting is very intense when narottam das thakur he came into that place shrinivas acharya was sitting with so many devotees there and speaking krishna katha and shrinivas acharya he saw narottam narottam saw shrinivas and both of them you know they came together to meet and narottam at that time he bowed down to touch his feet and shrinivas lifted him and gave him a tight embrace and what do you think other devotees did there hari bol hari bol hari bol and the talk began intense talk both of them they started sharing yaad hai brindavan mein kya kiye the hum log govardhan ke wahan radha kund mein jamuna mein and they all started discussing how blissful those days were and at that time shrinivas said let me share that i am married now 
and my base is in Jajigram. And recently, I went to Brindavan. Oh, what an experience that was, Narottam! I should tell you. And Narottam was already feeling that separation from Brindavan, and now he is getting to hear about Brindavan and all the residents of Brindavan. So Shrinivas Acharya started speaking about Jiva Goswami. He started speaking about other Vaishnavas. He spoke about Lokanath Goswami, the disciple or the guru of Narottam Das Thakur. And he also made a statement that everyone remembers you, Narottam. They were asking about you. Narottam was in ecstasy, hearing about Brindavan. This is called madness for Brindavan. <clears throat> I don't know when we will get. But without this madness, one cannot go back home, back to God, to go look at Brindavan. So all these devotees, they are all mad for Brindavan. Mad for that place. Don't know what is there in that place. I am not able to understand much with my limited intelligence. But something these devotees see there, they get attached to that place to such an extent that they feel so much of separation. And as soon as they hear about Brindavan, they get into ecstasy. And here is an example of Narutam Das Thakur. And at that time, when all this discussion was going on, one person was looking at Narottam. And his name was Ramachandra Kaviraj. All the time was gazing at Narottam. And when he was looking at Narottam, so our Srinivas Acharya, he introduced, he is my foremost disciple and his name is Ramachandra. And when we went to Vrindavan, there the devotees saw his wonderful qualities and gave him the title Kaviraj. And Narottam was also looking at him and both of them just by their glance, exchange of their glances, they became very close to each other. And there began a serious discussion. Narottam Das Thakur, he told Srinivas Acharya, let's see, this is what I'm planning. What do you say? On the day of appearance of Gauranga, Let's invite all the devotees from all over Gauda and Utkal Desh, all over India, from Rindavan also we'll invite. Let's invite all of them and let's have a grand festival. Now Srinivas, being a very good manager, in fact, when they left from Rindavan, all three, when farewell was given, at that time Jeeva Goswami told, Srinivas, Narottam, Shamananda, three of you will be led by Srinivas. He is very good at managerial skills. So here, Narutam, you know, he said you know, that, yes, this is what we are planning. But this great manager, he said, but that will require so much of uh, planning. That will need so much of arrangement. And Narutam, I tried my best to arrange festivals. But then, these devotees are there in different, different places, feeling separation from Gauranga. They are not able to come out of their house, forget about traveling to Keturi. And at that time, Narottam said, See, no worries about finance. King is going to finance. He is doing all the arrangements, all the logistics he is taking care of. But I am sure if you are there, Srinivas Acharya, if you are there, everything will fall in place. When all this discussion was happening, so Srinivas said, Okay, chalo, let's sit and make a list of devotees whom to invite. It is such an ecstatic thing. Can you imagine? They are sitting and making a list of those senior devotees at that time. And they started jotting different names. And the first name that they penned down on the paper was Janava Mata. Janava Mata is the consort of Nityananda Prabhu. So Nityananda Prabhu went back with Gauranga. But Janava Mata was here and she was, she was that great personality who was leading the entire Gaudiya Vaishnavas at that time. A lady was leading. Can you imagine that? Janava Mata. Second name that they wrote down was Achyutananda, son of Advaita Acharya from Shantipur. Another name, two names they wrote, Shripati and Sri Nidhi. Who are they? Huh? Yes, Srivas Thakur's brothers, Sri Nidhi and Shripati. And they wrote another name, and his name was Sri Riday Chaitanya. From which place he is? Ambika Kalna. He's from Ambika Kalna. Yes. And there's another personality called Raghunandan Thakur from Srikanda. What is the speciality of Raghunandan? His father, when he was small, his father told him, I'm going out, you do the bhoga offering. And some laddu was given to him by his mother. He goes there and then he keeps there, small boy. 
Raghu at that time. He keeps that and then cow away. And then there's no response on the other side. And he started crying. He started crying and beating the ground saying, when my father offers you eat, when I'm offering you an olive, you have to eat. And he started crying and crying and crying. And that innocent baby or innocent boy, when he started crying, literally the Lord had to put his hand out and then take and eat. And at that time, Raghu was very happy. And then he took the empty plate to his mother. And she's asking, where is Prasad? <laughs> and he's like, Lord ate everything. And now his father also came. That get me some prasad, I'm very hungry. And she said, that ask your son, where is prasad? <laughs> Looks like he's eaten all the laddus. And then again it was given to him that go and offer because they wanted to check khud ne khaya ki bhagwan ne khaya. And again Raghunandan started doing the same thing and his father was hiding and saying, who is this? What is going to happen? And again, Lord put his hand and ate and this personality fainted with looking at the scene. My son is such a great devotee. He is Raghunandan. We can go on speaking. Some other day we will speak about Raghunandan Thakur. So he was <clears throat> invited. Or his name was put. And there, the third person in the trio, Shyamanan Prabhu. So to him also a letter was sent. Or his name was jotted down. Now the big list, more, many more devotees were listed in this. And they went off to sleep on that day. And in the dream of Srinivas Acharya, something divine happened. Lord Chaitanya appeared in the dream of Srinivas and he said, I want this festival to happen. It's my desire. And when Srinivas got up, he was in ecstasy. He said, Narottam, we have to do this festival. Lord wants it. And he said, now the festival will be successful. Let's go ahead and begin. And immediately the next day, they had written an invitation. This invitation speciality is, it was a Sanskrit poetry. Good, we didn't get it. I mean, it was a head and tail. No word to word meaning, no translation. So it was sent to all those devotees and all these Gaudiya Vaishnavas. In fact, in our entire parampara, all the devotees, they were all Sanskrit scholars. Scholars in Bengali. They are all scholars in Shastra. And such a unique invitation was sent to everyone. And at that time, the invitation was sent through people. There were 15, 20 people who were sent around the entire country. And they were going and inviting all the devotees. And a few months left, and the invitations are going everywhere. So Srinivas told Narottam that I will join you, but uh, you can go now and you can begin the entire arrangement. And you need not go alone, you can take Ramchandra Kaviraj also. Ramchandra was very happy, Narottam was very happy, they both started. See, this one thing which we have to understand is that when it comes to exalted souls, Lord personally instructs them what they have to do. And it's very natural for them to understand what is the right thing and they do it. But when it comes to us, we will not get Lord in our dream and, you know, okay, do this tomorrow, do this day after tomorrow, no. So for them, Lord is giving direct instructions and for us, we get instructions through the parampara, that is through spiritual master. Sometimes a devotee is getting to another level of bhakti, illusory. And they think that, oh, anyways, Lord is inspiring me. You know, I'm getting this thought and that thought. Anytime we get any realization or we feel it's a realization, we should go and cross-check with our superiors. Very important. Is this in line with Shastra or not? Hmm? Because many times this will happen. That we are hearing some class and some nice realization comes and then, you know. And we are in ecstasy. Oh, Lord has given his realization. And you go to your superior and you tell, Prabhuji, this is what I go ahead, Paltu. Shastra ke virudhi sochega amesha. Again Shastra. So it's very important to cross check. And I have seen my own superiors. They cross check with their superiors, with some sannyasis. That this is what is my realization. Is this in line with Shastra? Is my mood correct? See, with time, as we grow in bhakti, what matters is mood. And it's very important to cross check with the mood because there's always a chance of getting into two extreme paths. One is becoming a Sahajya or becoming a Mayavadi. Either we get into that bhav of, you know, I am on a different platform and Lord is my lover and this and that. 
or we'll get into another angle altogether there is no form of the lord mm-hmm. or i am god you know that mood therefore one has to be very careful what is the mood that we have got and have to cross check is this mood proper mm-hmm. therefore here we see shrinivas acharya and all the other devotees also they would get personally lord would come and tell them what they are supposed to do and here narottam and ram ramchandra kaviraj they started you know for their place that is kheturi gram now this entire festival is such a great festival that many many months before the preparation has started for us we begin one day before on same day maybe maybe morning time go get flowers decorate and all that for them many many months before oh gaur purnima gaur purnima gaur purnima and every one in kheturi gram was ecstatic oh gaur purnima the great festival that's going to happen in kheturi gram everyone was very very happy and here narottam and uh, Ramachandra Kaviraj when they started walking they started seeing the various different different arrangements that those were happening the king santosh datta he had already started constructing the huge temple and already two things were already done one is the storehouse where all the different items will be stored and a huge kirtan hall for doing kirtan that was already done and the rest of the temple was getting ready And now, since so many thousands of devotees are going to come, there were guest houses. Those are getting built. The many guest houses getting constructed at that time. And Narottam was glancing at all that. He was very happy. Very less time is left. Only few months, and everything has to be done by that time. And then they saw that in the sun, there were clay mridangas kept for drying. fresh mridangas getting ready for that maha sankirtan that is going to happen on the day of gaur purnima after few months there were glittering kartals which were kept and like this the entire preparation was going on then he went to a place to check if the deities are ready five deities of lord krishna and shrimati radharani and one deity of gauranga now see when it comes to these great souls they know how lord looks tatvadarshi they have seen the truth many times when uh, devotees they would go to shila prabhupad with a painting they'll show prabhupad is this okay and prabhupad will give corrections to them you know like this the i should be like this no should be like this and then the lord should be like this this should be the form and etc etc and if someone asks prabhu how do you know this i know <laughs> <laughs> so from shastra they know and they know it very well by sakshat darshan as well mm-hmm. once jadurani mata ji she made a painting of radha and krishna so krishna was there with the flute and shrimati radharani was having garland in the hand and that garland instead of showing it towards krishna it was to the other side and shila prabhupad saw that and then shila prabhupad commented saying looks like radharani has got another boyfriend Jadurani heard that. Mata ji heard that, and she went. She was completely devastated. Oh, I have done something like this, and that moroseness could be immediately seen on her face. And Shila Prabhupada saw that, and Shila Prabhupada said, "No, no, looks like Radhani is looking at who is that devotee who made this beautiful painting? This garland is for you." <laughs> <laughs> and then Jadurani Mata ji was back, you know, with full smiling face. Hmm. Prabhupad knows very well how to pull, how to push. <laughs> <laughs> and here, you know, we see that how Narottam, and in fact, talking about Prabhupad, for our Vrindavan temple, Radha Sham Sundar deity, Prabhupad was sitting on the asan, and then he was telling how the deity should be carved. And when it comes to Radha and his pose, how she should be standing, he got up personally. and he stood in a particular pose and he showed that this is how i want in a certain dancing pose she is in this is these are the acharyas and narottam was very particular very particular about the face of the lord the form of the lord and everything so he sanctioned the five krishna deities and radharani deities but when it comes to gauranga again and again he was giving feedback no this is not proper no that is not proper and those people who were carving the deity they were puzzled what to do because they are not able to carve properly sometimes the face was not proper sometimes the form was not proper narottam was not happy 
and one night when narutham was uh, sleeping resting he got a dream again lord comes to the dream chaitanya mahaprabhu came in the dream and chaitanya mahaprabhu told narutham this carving will not be successful so don't endeavor for that no narutham was like oh, then where will you get the deity from and lord said that my golden form is hidden in so and so place go and get that deity and now narottam no very very meticulous when he come to doing service he was doing all these different different things at the same time he was writing verses which he was supposed to chant and sing on the day of gaur purnima and then he will go and train you no know, two three devotees who are supposed to be in his kirtan team the names were gokul das and devi das they were supposed to play mridanga kartal and other instruments for narottam das thakur on the day so training was happening of kirtan not like ours you know mic ko ek pakadega are karta le mridanga and this and that no it's all planned the tunes are planned and narottam das thakur wanted to offer the best of the best tune the most extraordinary tune he wanted to offer on that day and obviously narottam das thakur singing the description says very very ecstatic and the sound or the voice is very very sweet filled with love and devotion for gauranga all this practice and other things were going on only this was pending that is deity so narottam das thakur when he got this dream he decided chalo we have got some clue now let's go without thinking twice let's follow the instruction of the lord in the dream lord told one name and that name was vipradas and lord told him very clearly that my form which is made up of solid gold is there in a granary where the grains are stored in the house of a person called vipradas now narottam does not know who this person is he started asking various people around you know vipradas you know vipradas people are asking why you want this person no just like that he is not revealing that what happened or why he wants he's going around and asking and now since narottam das thakur narottam das thakur mahashay is going around and asking about vipradas the residents started thinking kuch to hoga and they also started following narottam das <laughs> to see what is that what is that this this person why is he searching for this person and then he finally came because he got to know where this person stays he went there and vipradas was very happy oh such a great sadhu such a famous sadhu has come to my home he paid dandavats he gave him a place to sit and at that time he asked narottam das thakur what can i do for you and narottam said you just allow me to enter your storehouse and he said why you want to go to storehouse tell me what you want i'll get it out for you and the other side thinking maybe for that festival rice shortage is there maybe or something like that <laughs> and king santosh is thinking no I, everything is arranged and here narottam said see i don't want rice i just want to enter your storehouse why i just want to enter your storehouse and he is not telling and at that time vipradas he said see that particular storehouse is infested with snakes poisonous snakes and i have kept it locked anyone who goes near that door hissing sound starts inside the lot of snakes poisonous snakes therefore i have locked it in fact i am a merchant and i want those fine rice grains which are there inside in stock to be sold but i am not able to go inside and narottam is like i want to go there and vipradas is low oh, i cannot allow you if something happens to you what will happen is there nothing will happen to me snakes are there inside that's okay and when all the discussion was happening others were talking why narottam wants to go there and here vipradas is not talking to others that no we shouldn't send him etc etc and all the discussion was happening narottam quietly he went and said open the door he entered inside and everyone was stunned everyone was stunned they were just able to see the dark rectangle there's a door which is open and narottam was inside and all of them they were anticipating that now there'll be shouts of help me help me help me Vipradas had tried his best to get snake charmers to get the snakes out but he was unsuccessful there was no snake charmer who was able to charm any of the snakes to get them out <laughs> in fact they were scared and they would run away from that place and narottam entered that place and inside when narottam went 
He told all the snakes, "Get out of this place. I'm on a mission." And all the snakes came out. <laughs> Can you imagine our acharyas? They are not ordinary. They are all next level. You all get out. I am on a mission. And all snakes slithered, slithered away outside. And everyone was dumbfounded to look at that. All the snakes are out, but they were not going inside. Just peeping in and saying, "What is this Narottam doing?" And Narottam Das Thakur, he was putting his hands in each of uh, that grains, and he was trying to search something. And everyone was like, "What is he searching for?" And finally, he got something and he removed that. And it was the beautiful golden deity of Gauranga. As all smeared with uh, the dust of the grains, and Narottam you know, was removing all that. And people are able to see that something has removed. And then, when Narottam got the beautiful deity of Gauranga out, everyone was just shouting loudly, "Jai Gauranga! Jai Gauranga! Jai Gauranga!" They are all able to see Gaurhari's beautiful form. And Narottam was ecstatic, and this is how he wanted the deity to be. And now he has the deity. Everything is set. Five Radha Krishna deities are ready. Gauranga deity is also ready, ready-made already. <laughs> Some places it is said that even Vishnu Priya's deity was there. In other places it is said no, it's only Gauranga deity. But anyways, Gauranga's deity was there. Then he took that deity, and the description says that deity. Is five kg pure gold. Even now, it is there. It was worshipped in the lineage of Narottam Das Thakur's foremost disciple, Ganga Narayan Chakravarti. It is there in that lineage, and people are worshipping. Our sannyasis have visited that place, and they talk about the deity also in their classes. Someday we should also go. Five hours journey from Mayapur. Someday we can go and. Take darshan of this beautiful self-manifested deity. Then he went and then he kept the deity, you know, with other deities, and he went on to other places to see if everything is set. This is called as doing service very meticulously. This is the quality of a very elevated soul or a devotee who is advancing on the path of bhakti, because they'll be. they'll know very well that this service is meant for the pleasure of the lord and lord will get more pleasure if the service is done nicely so everything they will make sure it it will be proper you see when chaitanya mahaprabhu was doing uh, gundicha marjan cleaning the temple of gundicha how much effort he was putting there he was going around and then cleaning so first he picked up all the big uh, things which were there the sticks and other uh, grass and this and that he was lying here and then he collected that first And then he collected the dust, and then between the tiles, you know, there's some space, right? Some uh, narrow space, and that dust will be there. He started cleaning that also. This is called as meticulously doing service. See, our constitutional position is we are servants of the Lord. Lord, Jeeva Rasvarupai, Krishna Ranitya Das. We are servants of Krishna, and the job description of the servant is to meticulously serve the Lord for His pleasure, not for our pleasure. And you can see Narottam Das Thakur for Lord's pleasure. How much he is doing? He went to uh, meet Srinivas Acharya. He comes back and then he is tense that where will the Goranga deity come from? And the the day is coming very soon, just few months from now. And then he gets the Goranga deity also. He is meticulously just watching and seeing if the Radha Krishna deities are getting ready properly. Is the temple getting ready properly? And Santosh at that time, King Santosh, he was building huge boats also. and that also was overseen by narottam you are seeing okay boats because in that huge boats which were decorated very nicely the great vaishnavas of the gaudiya line they were to sit and cross the river to come this side they were all very very meticulous in the service and ramachandra kaviraj he was assisting narottam das thakur and while that entire service was getting executed they built a very strong bond with each other therefore in that song he writes ramachandra sangamage narottam das so when all the service was happening finally the day arrived such an ecstatic day that is this side of padma river narottam das thakur shrinivas acharya and other ramachandra kaviraj and all the other devotees who were there devi das gopal das and all of them they were all standing 
the residents of Keturi Gram, they were standing because everyone at that time was a Vaishnav. All of them, they are standing and they are waiting. Now they will come. Now they will come. It was one day before. And at that time, they could see different, different boats coming from different, different direction. And they were all ecstatic. And they were able to see that there was a huge boat. And on that, there was a very effulgent lady with other devotees on the boat. And they all said, Janava Ma has come. And they all from far, they paid obeisance to Janava Ma. From one side, Achudananda, Advaitacharya's son is coming. From the other side, Raghunandan Thakur is coming. And like this, all those devotees were coming. And these devotees were ecstatic, paying obeisance, jumping, hurry bowl, hurry bowl. And all of them, they were moving towards the bank on this side. And when the boat came of uh, Janavama, so at that time, Narutam Das Thakur, Srinivas Acharya, and all the devotees, because she was a very, very senior devotee. In fact, the senior most devotee at that time. They all paid obeisance to Janavama, seeking her blessings. And all the other devotees, they were so happy seeking blessings and they were all jumping in ecstasy. Jai Vaishnav Thakur, Jai Vaishnav Thakur. And then slowly and steadily, other senior Vaishnavas also started coming. And Narutam Das Thakur, he told Janavama that we were thinking that you will not be coming. But now since you have come, the festival is going to be the grand festival for sure. Thank you very much for coming. And Janavama said, how can I miss the first Gaur Purnima festival? How can I miss? So Srinivas Acharya, Ramchandra Kaviraj, they escorted Janavama and other senior devotees. And they took them personally to different, different quarters which, which was made for them. Specially for the festival, Gaur Purnima festival. And one, one devotee was assigned for each senior devotee in that room. That you have to take care of this devotee, you have to take care of this devotee. And like that, many senior devotees were given their places. And various other devotees who came, they were given some places to stay. And like that, every devotee was taken care of very nicely. They all were welcomed with garland, sandalwood pulp, and narsima oil maybe. <laughs> Sprinkling rose water on them. And when Janava Mata was, when she was walking with other devotees, they were observing that all the roads were cleaned so beautifully. And all the roads were beautiful rangolis which were put with uh, rice flour. Every single path was decorated with banana stems, banana leaves. And mango leaves were hung and flowers were hung outside every door. And everything was so beautiful. The description says the place was looking like Vaikuntha. And Janava Mata, she is glorifying the entire place. Now just imagine, the organizers, how wonderful they will feel. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> they were happy because Janava Mata was very happy. And like this, all the devotees, they were glorifying all oh, this wonderful place. They all went, you know, to uh, their respective rooms. They got ready. And everyone assembled in that beautiful new temple which was about to get inaugurated. This was one day before. And the thing that is told or the term that is given for a ceremony that happens one day before is called as Adivas ceremony. See, it is so wonderful to see when these great personalities, when they are organizing festival, look at the Vaishnava etiquette they are following. Very strict. Very strict when it comes to Vaishnava etiquette. Senior devotees are coming. Oh, they have to be taken care of very nicely. Their room should be clean. They should be given a place to stay. There should be devotees assisting them. And every devotee should be taken care of very nicely. Prasad should be given. Garland should be given. Everything was properly arranged. In fact, it is described that in every room or every quarter that was made, every quarter. So there, in those particular places, kitchen was also there and special cooking was happening as per the diet requirement of the devotee. So I think it is in Parampara. Yes. You can imagine meticulous, the meticulous. And Vaishnava etiquette to the highest level it was followed. See, Vaishnava etiquette is something which every devotee should follow very nicely. You know why? Because in our Baddha state, in our conditioned state, if something is going to help us to guard ourselves from aparad, from offenses, is this particular term called Vaishnava etiquette. Therefore, every single devotee should learn Vaishnava etiquette. And these Vaishnava etiquettes are the ornaments of a devotee. 
Devotees will not wear gold necklace and this and that and then you know. The devotee's ornament says Vaishnava etiquette. Therefore, it is said Vaishnava etiquette, ornament of a devotee. And here we see all these devotees were very, very beautiful because they were wearing a lot of ornaments of Vaishnava etiquette. And all these senior devotees, they all acknowledged their wonderful way of hospitality. So all these devotees, they were supposed to assemble you know, in that place. One by one, people started coming. And place was given to everyone, all the devotees. And when Janamama came and she sat, she was worshipped very nicely with the required paraphernalia, necessary paraphernalia. And Raghunandan, everyone remembers Raghunandan? Yes, I spoke a bit more on him because you should remember. His role is there in multiple places. So Raghunandan was that devotee who was asked to chant the Mangala Charan prayers and the other prayers of Adiva ceremony. And the prayers were chanted. All the senior devotees are sitting, Narottam, Narottam, Srinivas, Shyamananda, Ramchandra Kaviraj, and Gopal Das, Devi Das, and all of them, they are there. A lot of hustle and bustle to arrange the entire festival. And here Adivas, you know, prayers are chanted. And after that, a tumultuous kirtan started. This was day one of the festival. Tumultuous kirtan started where all the devotees, they participated in the kirtan. They were participating, invoking the auspiciousness in that place by chanting those auspicious prayers with Raghunandan Das Thakur, Raghunandan Thakur. In this way, in the Adiva ceremony, the Kirtan went on and on and on. Full night Kirtan. This was the Adiva ceremony. Next day morning was the installation of the deities, the six deities. All the six deities were kept and cloth was put on them. Everyone was knowing that these are the deities, but it was not uncovered. And at that time, since it was the day of installation, these three came together. Narottam Das Thakur, Srinivas Acharya and Ramchandra Kaviraj. And they started seeing everything and they called King Santosh also. Everything is said. Is this okay? Is that okay? Is all these different things in the list ready? And they all said, yes. And they went and they escorted Janava Ma there in the assembly. She was given a place you know, to sit, you know, on a higher place to sit. And at that time, all the devotees, they sat. Deities with the cloth was ready. And the head pujari of that place was Srinivas Acharya. And Srinivas Acharya, he knew everything that was given in Hari Bhakti Vilas, how to install deities. And Srinivas Acharya, first he addressed all the audience. That we are very, very happy to receive all of you. This is such a very important festival that is happening here, the appearance day of our Lord. And here we are going to install the six deities. And all the devotees, when they heard six deities, they were all Hari Bol, Hari Bol, Hari Bol. It was a huge festival, huge festival. And having spoken all this and describing what is going to happen, he unveiled the deities, he removed the cloth, and everyone was seeing the beautiful form of the five sets of Radha and Krishna and that beautiful golden Gauranga. And he started with the Abhishek ceremony. He started doing all that rituals, all that different uh, um, offerings that we do, starting with uh, asan, then padya, argya, achamaniya, etc., etc. And then he started pouring, you know, various different uh, wonderful auspicious items on these deities, the panchagavya, panchamrata, and all the devotees, including Narutam Das Thakur, they were all just gazing at these deities. The Abhishek ceremony was nicely done. And the deities were taken you know, to the place for dressing. Now the dressing was nicely done by Srinivas Acharya. And there were a huge number of bhogas which were ready to be offered. We are discussing the day of Gaur Purnima, early morning ceremony this happening. And when the bhoga was offered and uh, the dress was offered, the dressing was done. At that time, Srinivas Acharya, he came out and he said, they are ready. And the Aarti was supposed to start now. The first Aarti after installation. And the altar was opened. And Srinivas Acharya loudly started shouting the names of the six deities. 
and he said shri shri gaurang mahaprabhu ki shri shri radha vallabhi kant ki shri shri radha krishna ki shri shri radha vraj mohan ki shri shri radha raman ki shri shri radha kant ki and the altar was open and all the devotees were looking at those beautiful deities which were there in the altar and the aarti was about to begin at that time shrinivas acharya he told narottam please begin your kirtan and narottam das thakur mahashay he went to all the senior devotees was paying obeisance he went to janavama he paid obeisance to her seek the seek the blessings he went to other devotees and he seek the blessings and after seeking everyone's blessing then he came and he sat on that place which was meant for the lead kirtanya and then he had his mrutanga player devi das on one side gopal das was there and all the other devotees were there and narottam das thakur started singing bhajans which was composed by himself and those bhajans were sang in an extraordinary tune which devotees had not heard before his voice was so sweet and the mrudanga kartal and other things they were also played in a certain way which narottam das thakur had told and trained before itself and narottam das thakur with all the feelings and all the love and devotion he started glorifying gauranga on the day of gaura purnima he started glorifying and when he started singing it was a slow pace and it picked up the aarti is going on devotees are all hearing the bhajan those different verses and they are witnessing the aarti also and the entire kirtan went very deep with time deeper and deeper and deeper see when it comes to us we need a word by word translation etc then we'll understand sanskrit verses bengali verses and all for them they knew everything whatever he was singing and devotees when they were hearing the glories of gauranga they were going crazy some devotees sitting on the chair were falling down they were fainting other devotees were crying here that bhajan and narottam das himself you know he was having tears filled in his eyes and he was ecstatic he was singing and your janabama was ecstatic and other devotees were ecstatic and the kirtan was going deeper and deeper and deeper very deep and lot of love and devotion that could be seen in that and at one point narottam started singing those bhajans which were signifying the separation from lord gauranga and those bhajans were very intense and he was singing and when he was singing the entire atmosphere was filled with vipralamba bhav at that time the mood of separation and every single devotee present there were able to experience that mood of separation from gauranga see it's very very important it's not about just hearing anyone and everyone many times newcomers new devotees who are there they don't understand they feel probably sab bhajan hi hai ye bhi acha bhajan wo bhi acha bhajan sometimes bollywood ka bhajan tollywood ka bhajan <laughs> they might be glorifying the lord but the mood is important because finally when we hear some vani at that time we have to understand the mood of the person is also entering and modifying our mood therefore the lectures also that we hear and the kirtans that we hear we have to be very careful you know whose kirtan whose lecture are we hearing if that devotee is intense will become intense if that devotee is halka phulka we are already halka phulka <laughs> will float <laughs> will float therefore the devotees whom we hear they have to be very intense and deep in their mood and bona fide because naturally you will experience and you will see that if you are sitting in the class of that devotee is very intense you will be on a different platform altogether floating and when the class gets over back to normal you can see that difference you can see that difference naturally in the consciousness and in the mood and here every one in the kirtan was able to relish and feel the mood of separation that narottam das thakur was feeling eyes filled with tears voice getting choked and he was feeling separation from gauranga and at that time like a flash in front of everyone qualified unqualified doesn't matter in front of everyone lord gauranga personally appeared nityanand prabhu appeared advaita charya appeared gadadhar pandit shrivas thakur the six goswamis and all the other devotees they appeared personally there and it is described that lord chaitanya was standing besides the kirtan team and narottam das thakur he was singing he was playing kartal and he looked at gauranga and he was thinking is it a dream is it some vision that i have got 
so he touched gauranga and actually he was physically present and narottam fainted for some time and all the devotees were able to see that gauranga has come nityananda has come advaita acharya is there and the kirtan was going on and gauranga was dancing nityananda was dancing advaita was dancing when janava ma saw nityananda prabhu oh my lord is here she was crying when achutananda saw my father advaita is here he was crying and all the devotees looking at lord chaitanya's dance and other devotees present there they were crying some devotees were fainting they were getting up rubbing their eyes am i seeing the, the reality or is this a dream what is happening and the dance started lord chaitanya is dancing nityananda is dancing who can describe you know they're dancing at least i cannot comprehend also what the dance will be and here narottam das thakur is the lead singer and looking ahead chaitanya mahaprabhu he is getting choked sometimes he is fainting sometimes getting up and it is described that lord chaitanya he was swirling around spinning around the entire temple and every single devotee was getting sakshat darshan of lord chaitanya you know this is what is the glory of association of senior devotees when they are present when senior devotees are present the lordships naturally manifest in that place and we unqualified people when we sit there hum mai mehsoos hota hai kuch looks like something is different here don't know what it is but something is different i'm feeling something blissful i'm feeling like doing bhakti something is different here i'm sure all of you will experience this when we sit in the class of those exalted people or when we are in the association of exalted people when we hear simple statements from them we are not the body we are spirit soul i'm getting goosebumps yeah i am spirit soul <laughs> अभी इतने बार एफ ओ में बोला गया गीता कोर्स में बोला गया तभी चमका नहीं एंड एंड कम एंड से आल्सो प्रो यू नो व्हाट देन महाराज सेड वी आर नॉट द बॉडी ऑफ स्पिरिट सोल एंड द प्रीचर इज थिंग मैं भी तो यही बोलता रहता हूँ भेज में घुसा क्यों नहीं अभी तक इट मेक्स अ लॉर्ड ऑफ डिफरेंस एंड ह्योर Narottam Das Thakur's intense separation mood invoked the presence of Panchatattva. They were all dancing in ecstasy. The kirtan was going deeper and deeper, and here the dance was going intense and intense. Some devotees are rolling on the ground. Some devotees are crying. Some devotees just fainted. They get up, they faint. They get up, they faint. Because no one was able to comprehend what is happening. Many decades back, all these personalities disappeared, and again these people have manifested. What is happening? and when they were able to comprehend what is happening at that time lord chaitanya he embraced shrivas shrinivas acharya and then he went to embrace narottam das thakur and like the flash they manifested themselves similarly as a flash they disappeared and when they disappeared from that place all the devotees were searching goranga kotha hai where is my goranga where is my nityananda janava mai searching where is my nitai Achyutananda is searching where is my Advaita where is my father and all the devotees are searching where is our Gauranga where is he Narottam Das Thakur couldn't bear the separation that was there he just fainted he just fainted his voice was choked and all the other devotees are feeling pangs of separation from their lordships how can we baddha jivas understand what does that mean the ones who have not got an opportunity to see the lord da- lord's dance personally how can we actually feel what it is if we don't have that lovelyum to enter that kirtan like this the intense kirtans how will we ever enter there was this desire is very very important to relish the higher aspects of krishna consciousness that intense greed when we hear all these past times we have to think about it will anything like this happen in my life also or will i just you know die just like that can you imagine the kirtan where panchatattva are personally dancing how many of you want to enter the dance of panchatattva yes to waisa hari bol wala sadhna bhi karna padega yes aur hari bol wala sadhna karte karte hari bol ho jayega <laughs> anyways what is the use of this body what is the use of this life if we cannot go intense in our bhakti our love life is meant for sacrificing for the pleasure of guru and krishna therefore i always say that we have to burn this existence for the pleasure of the lord shivas to burn it it's okay we have to burn it for their pleasure what is the use of this life if we cannot uh, witness the beautiful forms of the lord shivas 
बेडांस वट इज यूज ऑफ दैट चलो भले कोई कोने में खड़े रह के देख रहे हैं इवन वी डोंट गेट टू गो इन साइड एंड होल्ड चैतन महापुरुष हैंड एंड डांस ओके वी आर रेडी टू नो टू स्टैंड फ्रॉम फार एंड विटनेस एवरी डे वी सिंग गौरंग भजन गौर आरती just imagine that scene gauranga is sitting on the asan one side is nitai one side is uh, gadadhar advaita is standing nearby shrivas thakur is holding the chata the umbrella and brahma is doing the aarti narahari chakravarti and vasudev and govind ghosh and ghosh brothers they are all standing and they are singing can you imagine that entire scene all devi devata are there everyone is dancing very graciously and we get an opportunity to stand dhoor se behind a tree and then you watching Yes, on the banks of the river of Ganga. We have to anchor, anchor for that. That someday, you know, our life will be perfect by you know, getting Saksha Darshan of the Lord. Mm-hmm. Therefore, it's very, very important that you know we understand that what we should anchor for. Why do we have all these past tense documented? What is the need of all this? Mm-hmm. Only so that these devotees who participated in that festival, they sow the seed in our heart. to participate in that festival such an important event but how can we understand what were they feeling when i was reading also i was thinking how will i understand what they are feeling mm-hmm. narottam das thakur is he is completely mad he is not able to understand what is happening around and shrinivas acharya he came back to his senses and he went and told in the ears of narottam thank you very much it's only by your mercy all this has happened and narottam is not understanding anything is not hearing anything properly mm-hmm. all the devotees they were coming and they were you know touching the feet of narottam thank you very much by your mercy we got this darshan and experience can you imagine qualified unqualified everyone was present they got darshan of the lord mm-hmm. and at that time janava ma she came she came there and at that time since the senior devotee has come you cannot be ecstatic crying and weeping and thing he got up somehow regained his senses he came back to his senses and he heard janava ma speaking and janava mata the senior devotee in the entire assembly she thanked narottam das thakur that this is all because of you it's all because of your mercy your arrangement that we got to experience something like this which was divine and sublime which we can never forget and all the devotees started discussing tune bhi dekha tune bhi dekha ya what did you see and they all started discussing gorang was looking like this nitai was looking like this advaita was jumping like this they're all discussing at that time janava ma she called shrinivas acharya and she said this is the right time to start holi and shrinivas acharya he got drums and drums of a lot of colors mixed with fragrant oil or something like that and the color powder those were there those were not like the dirty which we get now those are fragrant and all those colors were kept in front of the deities in the altar and they're all waiting for janava mata to come there and janava mata with her own hands she took the color powders from each container and she smeared on the deities all the six deities and then the colors were given out as prasad to all the devotees and the devotees started throwing colors on each other a tumultuous kirtan was going on jumping and dancing and many devotees went outside the temple also in the outside the temple premises jumping on the road dancing on the road throwing colors here there everywhere it was colorful and the kirtan went on and on and on and on and it was the evening time the tithi for celebrating gaur purnima and somehow devotees were bought are a jao jaldi festival chale chalu ho raha hai and all the devotees were got there all the devotees assembled janava ma is again you know she is sitting there on the high platform that was given to her all the devotees are sitting and gauranga's deity was got out and shrinivas acharya the head pujari he started doing the various uh, upcharas for the gauranga deity the first ever gaur purnima gaur purnima abhishek began and they all started singing the beautiful abhishekam prayers ईश्वर परम कृष्ण सच्चिदानंद विग्रह अनादिरादिर्गोविंद सर्वकारण कारण विल नॉट सिंग ऑल द वर्सेस इन थ्री टाइम सो दे ऑल स्टार्ट सिंगिंग वेरियस अभिषेक प्रेयर्स एंड व्हेन द प्रेयर्स वर डन टमल्शियस कीर्तन बिगैन 
and all the devotees they were witnessing the first abhishek that was happening on the day of gaur purnima and the entire thing was so divine and so ecstatic that every single devotee was experiencing something different something divine out of the world and the tamal shas kirtan is going on and devotees were roaring in the kirtan not like our kirtans as some dead people are asked to stand and do some dance and you know some sometimes looking down sometimes people sleep also standing yes especially mangal aarti when we sit down and chant che to ananta goti vaishnava and jai that is what is our situation i'm not talking about our situation i'm talking about these they were roaring kirtan everyone was roaring there and this kirtan went full night previous night also i think they did kirtan this night also they were doing kirtan and there were a lot of simultaneous things which were happening there was some uh, traditional dance which was going on at some places discourses were going on at some places some you know other singing was going on so various different different things were happening all around and devotee is going and participating at various places full night chal raha hai pura kirtan the entire festival is going full night i didn't read anywhere that there was prasad serving that was happening <laughs> i i didn't read anywhere <laughs> i was wondering i was searching also in the pages this is prasad serve work nahi kahi there is no prasad serving all were just ecstatic kirtan immersed in kirtan this is what is nourishment of a devotee you know see always remember one thing that a devotee's bhakti lata creeper should be nourished and we should do anything and everything possible to nourish that creeper if some devotees like kirtan yes they should sing kirtan if some devotees you know maybe hari krishna kirtan if some devotees like vaishnava bhajans yes they should say sit and keep sing if some devotees you know like to you know broom the floor clean the floor they should keep doing that some devotees like to do deity worship they should keep doing that they should we should find that what nourishes us in krishna consciousness i know some devotees they get nourished by washing vessels full day vessel full day also you put them they'll keep washing some devotees like cooking they just want to cook some devotees just want to read and do nothing in life apart from that and some devotees just want to chant there are people like that so we also should ask the question what actually nourishes me in krishna consciousness which i can just go on doing maybe full night like this on the day of gaur purnima so we should know that and it's a very very important thing to know because this is what will save us when there will be a time when we will fall from our current position of devotional service when we will be in a critical situation that will help if we don't know don't know our fall back option then it's a very difficult thing to tackle with various situations mm-hmm. therefore everyone should know every devotee should find out what is my fall back option in krishna consciousness therefore i i don't know if you have noticed i keep asking some devotees i don't know if i asked you that what do you like in krishna consciousness mm-hmm. and when devotees say everything then i say abhi isko time lagega samajhne mein abhi tak samajha nahi hai there will be something maybe one or two or maybe few but not everything is not possible we are not paramamsas to reach everything in krishna consciousness yes so in this way here devotees full night full night so some devotees they realized color is there on the body sochi wo pure color ke sath gaur purnima festival attend kiye the wo log some devotees realized wow oh, i think we should go and take bath in padma river early in the morning they went some devotees went to take bath some devotees were so ecstatic they directly came to mangal aarti in the same vesh bhusha later they went to take bath so like this all the devotees assembled for mangal aarti in the morning and the altar was open again the beautiful darshan of the six deities and the aarti was going on and devotees were relishing the aarti and after the aarti janavama personally with a band of cooks there were a lot of different different burners which were kept chula not the gas burners chulas were kept and she personally started cooking and then the personally started cooking for all the devotees and all the other bad cooks who were there they were all assisting and a lot of items were made and all those items were offered in the afternoon raj bhog was offered again i was searching did breakfast prasad serve hua ki nahi mila nahi mujhe so that prasad was served i mean that bhoga was offered and all the devotees were asked please come 
and no one was coming everyone was doing kirtan shrinivas acharya he went he stopped the kirtan he said you call come and sit and when the kirtan stopped then the devotees sat banana leaves were put and the prasadam serving began janava amma was personally she was directing the prasadam serving and it was told that keep serving prasad till the point the devotee is so full that he is not able to put even one morsel in his mouth and like that prasadam serving was going on and all the devotees they had prasad and they were having prasad suddenly the devotees were loudly shouting hari 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 <laughs> devotees were so happy looks like there was some gulab jamun also there <laughs> and when all this was happening when the devote when maximum devotees were served there were thousands of devotees huh? and all of them they were served narottam shrinivas they didn't have prasad janavama is not having prasad so narottam and shrinivas they went to janavama and they said maya you please you should have prasad please come please come and have prasad and at that time janavama she forced both of them that you sit and i want to serve this is the mode of devotees hmm. devotees sacrifice for others yes and for us we make devotee sacrifice for us <laughs> therefore in our you know when we have prasadam also now sometimes i notice when it is said two vadas and the five vadas are there in the plate and sometimes you ask probably that devotee does not eat and like that three four devotees will point to that devotee that he does not eat <laughs> और कभी कभी तो मेरा नाम लेके खा लेते हैं लोग एनीस वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग इन कृष्णा कॉन्शियसनेस इज वी टू बी वेरी सेंसिटिव वेरी सेंसिटिव अंडरस्टैंडिंग दैट हाउ वी हैव टू सैक्रीफाइस फॉर अदर्स नॉट दैट वी मेक अदर सैक्रीफाइस फॉर अवर सेंस ग्रेटिफिकेशन राइट एंड यू लुक एट दिस बोथ ऑफ दर टेलिंग दैट मैं यू शुड हैव एंड शी इज नो नो यू शुड इट एंड फाइनली शी इज इन डिवोटिंग so she forced them you sit and so they with they sat and their few disciples sat and janava ma personally being such a great senior devotee she with motherly affection she was serving all of them and she made sure that they will eat till the brim and after serving then after everyone was fin- everyone finished their prasad then janava ma sat and she had prasad oh my god very difficult to comprehend mm-hmm. and all the devotees they had prasad very nicely and after having prasad again the festival began again kirtan and everything and full night again it went on this was the three day festival of kheturi gram the first gaur purnima festival of the millennium and finally the time came when they had to bid the farewell narottam shrinivas ramchandra they were all not able to f- understand all these devotees will go away and yes everyone was going away and king santosh he had got clothes gold coins water pots and he was giving it to all devotees there were boats ready there were palanquins ready there were carts ready devotees started going some devotees were not able to leave the place they decided will stay for some more days here but finally they also had to leave and finally shrinivas acharya he said i'll stay back for some more time but his time also came because he was a grihastha so he had to leave so he also left but he told that uh, maybe ramchandra kaviraj can stay with you and narottam and ramchandra kaviraj they stayed back they were very happy and everyone else left that place this is that gaur purnima festival can you imagine how fortunate we are that every year we get to celebrate this gaur purnima festival after the disappearance day of lord after disappearance of lord chaitanya for many decades there was no gaur purnima and look at our great fortune such great fortune that everything will be set only thing is you have to go and sit and watch the aarti or you no know, abhishekam or whatever in that also you will the office may late ho jayega to is saal miss kar dete gaur purnima next year if i say that say we have only next 30 years to live on this planet फिर से इधर ही आएंगे भक्ति तो अभी किए नहीं ठीक से बट से वी हैव लास्ट थर्टी इयर्स इन दिस बॉडी हाउ मेनी गौर पूर्णिमा वी हैव बस थर्टी उसमें से एक मिस किया तो बस ट्वेंटी नाइन बचेगा ऐसे मिस करते करते गए तो सब मिस हो जाएगा देर फोर इट्स वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टू अटेंड द फेस्टिवल एंड यू नेवर नो 
that the flash that happened in panchatva manifested may be possible yes may be possible if not that at least on, on that day we can express our gratitude to gauranga that by your mercy today i can think of going back home back to go at this life if at all any of us go back home this very life remember it's only by the mercy of gauranga or else there's no hope there's no hope therefore gaur purnima is that day when we can express our gratitude to gauranga and express gratitude to ac bhakti vedanta swami shila prabhupad who took this most munificent incarnation everywhere in the entire world and can you imagine on that day of gaur purnima only in kheturi gram the festival was getting celebrated and by the mercy of shila prabhupad throughout the whole world the festival is getting celebrated this is our acharya so let's participate in this festival with great pomp and great enthusiasm let's do our services very meticulously following the vaishnava etiquettes properly and having the intense hankering that before leaving this body or in this very life i want to witness that kirtan thank you very much kheturi gram festival ki gaur purnima mahotsav ki jagat guru shri la prabhupad ki